Amen and amen. So good that you're here on this Wednesday, March the 2nd, for our Ash Wednesday service at Glenside United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Reverend Kim Kendrick. I proudly serve as our interim pastor. As we go to the previous slide, we're on our prelude as we begin our Ash Wednesday service with our prelude, Ashes to Ashes. Amen and amen. Ashes to ashes, from dust unto dust, the cross on our forehead, your promise, O oh God, ready us to follow the way of your Son, to rise from these ashes, Redeemed in the fire of your love. Sound of the trumpet in Zion, announce from the Lord that the day of God's favor is ever close at hand. Ashes to ashes from dust unto dust the cross on our forehead your promise O oh god ready us to follow the way of your son to rise from these ashes Redeemed in the fire of your love. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord who delights when we offer a truly humble heart. Ashes to ashes from dust unto dust the cross on our forehead your promise O oh god ready us to follow the way of your son to rise from these ashes Redeemed in the fire of your love. Redeemed in the fire of your love. Amen. And thank you so much for that beautiful prelude, Judy. And here I am at the front of the sanctuary on the screen. Um, I'm Anne-Therese Sortis. I'm the associate pastor here at Glenside United Church of Christ. And I'm delighted to welcome all of you to our Ash Wednesday service. You know, Ash Wednesday is a time that marks a solemn beginning for all of us. And so even as we welcome one another, even as we remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Tonight, we do so with a sense of solemnity, a sense of some seriousness, as we consider the ways that we turn ourselves back to God, that we prepare ourselves for this journey of Lent that we are undertaking right now. So if you're in the sanctuary right now, I invite you to rise as you are able and 
you know, just to turn around and, and see one another so that we can see one another as we begin this journey together. And if you're here on Zoom, like let's wave to one another a little bit. This is a time to see one another, to offer support as we begin our Lenten journey together. So I offer you all peace as we begin this time of Lent. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. Roll up your sleeves, let down your guard. Come in from the storm, make yourself at home. Pull up to the table, release the tension in your jaw. Take a deep breath, return to God with all your heart. May it be so. Our prayer of confession and words of forgiveness. As Pastor Ann Therese mentioned, Ash Wednesday is a solemn time where we look inward and we remember who we are and whose we are. And we take this time to confess and to remember. That Lent can sometimes get a negative reputation. It's viewed as the season in our faith when we give things up. We prepare for the worst. However, I can't help but imagine that God wants more for us than just six weeks of discipline or six weeks without chocolate or six weeks of not saying a curse word. I can't help but imagine that God wants a life for us that's expansive, expansive with faith, with joy and hope flowing over its edges. So let us confess, not because we have to suffer, not because we have to suffer our way through Lent, but because the truth moves us one step closer to that expansive faith. Let us pray. Holy God, I confess to return to you fully. I share with you the pieces of my life and that they aren't convenient. I pray on different hats and I put on different hats in different rooms. I forget that I'm called, I'm invited and I'm loved with all that I am, including my mess, my beauty, my faith and my doubt. Forgive me God and give me a heart that longs to return. Friends, God sees you, God hears you, God loves you. You are forgiven and claimed with all that you are. Rest in that good news. Thanks be to God and amen.
Amen. Friends, I invite you now to prepare yourself for the hearing of the word. I invite you to take a deep breath as you need to, to center yourselves. And I invite you to rise as you are able to hear our gospel according to Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your creator in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your creator who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your creator who is in secret. And your creator who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your creator who is in secret. And your creator who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise to you, O Christ. Good evening. Oh, good evening. good evening. Hello, my siblings and my friends online. If I can get a wave or a reaction, an emoji. I know we said that this is a solemn moment, but this is not a funeral. Amen. Amen. Maybe a reaction, an emoji down at the bottom, the bottom left. You see your reactions? Amen. No, nobody knows the reactions at the bottom left. Thank you, I got a thumbs up, thank you, thank you. Siblings, friends, my homily this evening, and it truly will be a homily this evening, Dave likes to hear that, is inspired by the Reverend Ashley Vitar Burt. She is the writer of the Ash Wednesday devotional. This is the, I'm gonna show you a copy this is the Ash Wednesday devotional that each one of you will be invited to receive soon. You'll have access to through our Glenside United Church of Christ website, through the mail as you leave today and on Sunday. Each and every one of you, yes, will have access to on our website, through the mail, today and on Sunday. So as you ask me how you can get a copy, yes, you will have access to through our website, in the mail, today 
and on Sunday and every Sunday throughout Lent is our devotional. And so today's homily is inspired by the Reverend Ashley Dittar Burt. And she's a writer of one, of one of the writers of this beautiful devotional that you will have access to. Reverend Ashley asks this question. When you hear the words Ash Wednesday, what's the first image that comes to mind? And so this is, this is where we talk back. You can unmute yourselves. We are an intimate group. So you can unmute. You can also raise your hand. You can call out. When you hear the words Ash Wednesday, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Death. Ashes on the forehead. The cross. If dust. Anyone online? You just make sure you unmute. I can't hear you, go ahead, speak up. Easter is coming. Catholic, yes. Lent, sacrifice. When you hear the word Ash words, Ash Wednesday, what comes to mind? Anything else? All of those things, brilliant. No meat, yes. Fish Friday, I'm a recovering Catholic, so yes. I remember every Friday we had to abstain from meat. Yes. I know even now there's Meatless Monday. There's someone else? Post Mardi Gras. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, I always hear that there are folks and there are still folks that say that they are giving something up. I mentioned a little while ago, giving up chocolate or not cursing. So that then here comes Easter and the day after Easter, chocolate, 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 chocolate. Or the day after Easter, cursing up a storm. Resuming that. For many of you, for many of us, for me, I'm willing to bet that yes, just like a lot of us said, it is the marking of ashes on our foreheads. We'll do that in a little bit, in a little while, in the shape of a cross. And it's this image that's so common that even people who don't practice Christianity, they know that today is Ash Wednesday. I've seen some people driving around in their cars with this, this, this mark on their heads and nobody bothered to say, hey, did you take a shower? Because they knew what today was and what today is. This mark, this symbol is a visible marker of both our faith and our practice as we prepare to enter and take on this journey. This journey of the spirit and the self that makes all things more interesting that our text that we find in Matthew that Pastor Aunt Therese read for us today, this evening, it seems to speak out this Matthew text. If we took a listen to it, Judy, the Matthew text speaks out, Carol, against really such markers if you listen to it. The Matthew text speaks out against such markers. In the Matthew 6 text, we're given instructions on how we should practice our faith. Specifically, we shouldn't be too showy. We shouldn't be too flashy or doing things to attract attention of others. The truth is though, that sometimes we are going to attract the attention of others. And sometimes we aren't. Some of us are loud. Some of us are bold. Some of us live with others that are bold and loud. And our faith comes out sometimes in that way. Some of us are quiet and still. Some of us are seeking quiet and still people. Some of us are seeking quiet and still lives. Some of us are seeking a quiet and still faith. faith. Most of us are both and neither. And some of us are in me and somewhere in between. We're boisterous and meek and we're terrified and we're joyous and we're nervous and we're so many things. 
And these are all beautiful things, not because others can see them, but because it makes us who we are, just as we are. And we are enough. And that is enough for our existence. And it is more importantly, enough for God. And it doesn't matter what mark shows up on our foreheads. What matters is that we're authentic and that we're walking in our authenticity and that our faith is authentic and that we are our authentic selves before God. The 40 days of Lent, Lent that we're often asked to sacrifice to give something up, whether it's chocolate or food or habit, only to return back right after Easter to that thing. How many of us have done that? Thank you for being honest. We recognize that tradition. Iterations of Lent often emphasize restraint, yep, sacrifice, some of us said that, confession, and piety. Many of us have begun to do those things. And how about if we do something, how about if we do something, Ray and Ruth, radically different? And I know Glenside, we can take it to do something radically different, to not look at Lent as a time that God is asking us to suffer, but as an invitation and a time of reflection and outward expansion. During the Lenten season, Glenside United Church of Christ, I want to extend an invitation for us to follow the Lenten season and follow the Lenten theme full to the brim, full to the brim. Full to the brim is an invitation into a radically different Lent. It's an invitation to be authentically who you are, to counter scarcity and injustice at every turn, to pour out more grace wherever it's needed. And it begins with everyone who will have access, everyone who has access to your authentic life. That's where it begins, with you and your authentic life. What you will have access to through our website, through the mail, today, our e-news and every Sunday is what's called a reflective assessment tool. Ada, I'm not sure if you can go to glensideucc.org and put that website in our chat. And if those that are online, if you can access the chat, or if you're online right now, you can also access glensideucc.org so that even if you are taking a look at this recording later tonight or later this week, you can also go to glensideucc.org to the connect up at the top and then scroll down to download and you will have access to this reflective assessment tool. The reflective assessment tool has a wellness wheel with eight areas within your life. The eight areas within your life are individual components emotional, spiritual, social, financial, physical, mental, environmental, and occupational. Within these areas of your life, there are prompt questions that will ask you. One of the prompt questions says, under emotional, what emotions do you feel day to day that are prominent? What emotions do you feel day to day that are prominent? And when you get to that specific section, write it down, or maybe you draw a picture, or maybe you color in what is the color that would reflect 
and then move on to the next section of that wellness wheel. So you're going to fill out the wellness wheel and take the assessment before Lent, be at this beginning of Lent. So try to do this before Sunday, sometime between now and Monday. Take this assessment. As you complete the assessment, you're going to move on to the next section. And in the next section, on the back, you're going to be able to imagine what is life like to be more expansive in these eight areas? What would life be like to be more expansive? Because what you're going to see in your wellness wheel are maybe some areas that are more full and maybe not so full. And so as you turn on the back, complete it for yourself. How could you be more expansive? How could you be more full to the brim? And what does it mean to be full to the brim for you on purpose and in your faith walk? What's the beauty of your relationship to God, to Jesus? to your family in each of these areas, emotional, spiritual, physical, occupation, social, financial, environmental, and mental. This is an invitation to draw closer, to do the self work, radically different than saying for 40 days, what food are you giving up? Different than saying for 40 days, which curse words won't you, will you not say? Different from saying for 40 days, but saying, how can you do the work of looking within, seriously looking within and naming, it goes on to next steps, naming three small things that you wanna fo focus on during this Lenten season to help you draw closer to God in wildly beautiful ways to focus in. Three things, three things that you'll focus on in conjunction with step-by-step -step, every day. You'll have a prayer book to read and every week you'll have commentary to help guide you along side by side with scripture. You'll have access to this on our website every Sunday. If, if you want to receive this in the mail, it can be mailed to you. And I have these that you, if you are here live, you can walk out with one. If you would like one mailed to you, yes, it could be mailed to you as well. Ada has already put the website it is already loaded on the website. If you hit the button, click it right now, it will come to your printer right now. Amen. Technology is a wonderful thing. Family, this is your invitation for this season of Lent to be glorious, for our time to be connected to the divine because the divine is in you. It's no, there's no hocus pocus. There's no Remember that eight ball where you used to shake it up and, and take a look to see where, where, where it would land? It's already right here within you. Will you join me in prayer? God of new life, we know that you want more for us than the rat race of work, sleep, eat, and repeat. In our fiercely independent and competitive world, Living a life any other way feels almost impossible. Remind us, God, that you ate meals around tables. Remind us that you demonstrated radical generosity. Remind us that you took quiet time on mountainsides by yourself. Remind us that you opened doors and said, come on in. 
Remind us that you created friendships that transformed. This is the life that you modeled. And this is the life that we long to lead. Holy God, help us to tap into the deeper and more expansive way of living. Help us use this season of Lent as an intentional one starting today. Help us build a life not measured by to-do lists, but measured by love. With hope, we pray and we say amen. 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 And let's continue our prayers aware of this invitation to abundant life, aware of this invitation to a holy season where we connect with this abundance. Can we hold on to the moment where we are aware of the prayers and the cares that we hold in our lives for our loved ones, <clears throat> for our neighbors, for our friends, for people all over the world? And I begin this evening um, holding in a very special way the conflict, the war that is happening in Ukraine right now. We continue to pray for peace. We continue to pray for an end to the violence that is happening there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to notice the violence in our own world, in our own streets, in our own homes, in our own lives, in our own hearts. We ask, oh God, that you help us to turn our hearts back to you, especially during the season of Lent, and you help us to find peace and to be peacemakers in our lives, in our hearts, in our neighborhoods, and in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray during this time of pastoral search um, for the continued work of our pastoral search committee and for all of those who are considering um, serving at our church. We pray for a spirit of discernment and we pray for God's continued blessing upon us as a church community during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I'd like to invite people who are in the sanctuary. I'm sure there's a microphone that's being passed around. If there's a prayer that you'd like to lift up to please do so and speak it into the microphone. And if you're online right now and would like to offer up a prayer to please offer it into the chat. And Pastor Kim, I'll ask for your help because you can be the eyes in the sanctuary. We have a prayer coming through in a sanctuary. Um, prayers for my friend and colleague, Lynn, who lost her mother and her father is very ill at the same time. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Continue to pray for our teachers, our administrators, our students who are recently navigating uh, the newness of getting back to normal with all the different guidelines of mask on, mask off, and different ways of being in classrooms, as well as all of our first responders those in hospitals, those that are on the streets. I also like to lift up um, the city of Philadelphia. Um, we just had experienced a 12 year old who was recently lost to violence by a police officer. For all of this, I pray, we pray, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer.
But loving God, you know the prayers of our hearts. You hear the prayers that we have spoken aloud. You know the prayers that are a part of our lives even before we know them ourselves. So we lift up all of these prayers, those that we have spoken, those that we hold in the quiet of our beings, those that we don't even know to pray just yet. We connect these prayers and lift them up together with the prayers of all of those of your children all over the world as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Loving God who art in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Your siblings in Christ. The early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Redeemer's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be 40 day season, a 40 day season of spiritual preparation. And during the season, converts to the faith, they would be prepared for their holy baptism. And it was also a time where persons who had committed any serious sins, they would separate themselves from the community of faith. They were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. We don't want anyone here to be separated, amen? Amen. I love y'all. We don't want you to be separated. But in this way, we as an entire congregation, we are reminded of the mercy and of the forgiveness that God extends to each and every one of us. And in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the need that we all have to be renewed, the need that we all have to be filled to the brim with God's love, with God's mercy, with God's joy. And so I invite each and every one of you in the name of the church to observe this holy Lenten season, to do the self-examination by prayer, fasting, if you can, if you check with your physician first, fasting, by reading the holy word, the devotional that we provide, and meditating as well. To make a right beginning and by taking the mark of our mortal nature, which is a sign of our mortality and we use ashes. And what we have are not actual ashes, but burnt palm. If you are at home, I invite you to utilize cooking oil from out of your kitchen, out of your home. You can always use soil from your plant, from your garden. You can also draw a picture with your children, with a loved one. You can use just the sign of the cross in the air, on the palm of your hand, on the center of your hand as well in the air or on your forehead as well. I ask that we, before you do that, that we pray over whatever element that you have to utilize as we pray now over these ashes that are burnt palms from last year's palms. Let's pray now. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth 
Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through our Redeemer, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And so I invite you at home to grant to yourself the imposition of ashes, however you see fit. With the words, remember you come from ashes and to ashes you shall return. Remember you come from ashes and to ashes you shall return. If you have a loved one with you, you can certainly um, invite and actually extend the invitation to ashes with your loved one. Here in the sanctuary, after the benediction, once Judy begins to play, at our exit, we will have the imposition of ashes. With our benediction, Friends, as you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may that laughter be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit and may it change your life in the name of the lover, the beloved, the love itself, go in peace and be full to the brim. Amen and amen.